excited about is the return of Cristiano Ronaldo. And I've got a caveat here. I mean, if it's the first time that anybody's listened to this podcast, they'll know that you or I, unfortunately, don't support teams that are in the Premier League. In fact, you far from it, but we'll, you know, we'll, 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 sorry, mate. Low blow that I'm one, yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. Move on quickly. Uh, we, we shall, we shall move on. <laughs> um, is the Ronaldo effect... What are we going to find from the Cristiano Ronaldo effect? I mean, I'm so excited about it. And I'm not a Man United fan at all, like we just said. And But I just, I can't wait to see him back. Can't wait to see what he can do. He's obviously a completely different footballer uh, from uh, the last time round. Um, you know, 196 appearances, 84 goals, 34 assists. Those first two or three seasons, he was a bit of a show pony. Uh, from memory and also talking to sort of journalists who've covered Man United for for years and years and years, you know, 18 years ago, he made his debut, for goodness sake, for Manchester United. And um, they were saying that, yeah, the first sort of couple of seasons, he had no end product and he was, you know, he was exciting and got sort of fans sort of off the seats and whatnot. But um, it was in that last couple of seasons when he won the Ballon d'Or and the Champions League before he obviously made that move to Real Madrid where he just sort of just went to a different level altogether. Different footballer. Um, in Syria, he was absolutely unbelievable as well because you look last season and all this, I know he scores penalties and was on, you know, set pieces and whatever. You've got to remember, he scored 29 goals in Syria. It's 29 goals. And a lot of people are waxing lyrical about Romelu Lukaku and Chelsea have paid 97 and a half million quid for him. And yes, he's got age on his side. And yes, he's a different kind of player. And it adds so much more, doesn't he, uh, than, than Ronaldo. But you can't argue with those numbers, can you? It was a team that didn't win the title as well, Juventus. And he scored five more goals, you know, in, across the season. Jake, you're going to probably have a bit of a pop up the air and say, oh, no, you know, expected goals, you know, this, that and the other. And he was incredibly clinical. Or so I don't know. But those numbers are numbers and uh, that you can't really argue with. Um, Manchester United to win the Premier League, their opening odds um, were 6.61 with Pinnacle before a ball had been kicked to the Premier League season. That was the day before the Premier League season started. Um, uh, on the 1st of September, so the day that Ronaldo's deal was rubber-stamped by Manchester United, the odds plummeted to 4.920. And to win the golden boot, he is at fives, um, which, you know, I don't know. I mean, you're shaking your head at that one, mate. Um, let me know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on this? How much of an impact is he going to have? And can he still do it in the Premier League? What have Manchester United signed him for without talking about shirt sales? <laughs> yeah, now they've signed him for uh, for goals. Really, that's the main reason that he he's in his later years. He's definitely more of a number nine than he was than, than an out and out winger. He's a um, you know serial poacher. Uh, he's fantastic in the air as well. Um, in the most recent international match, which he just so happened to break the uh, international scoring record, he scored two unbelievable headers. Um, yeah, that he's basically the kind of sh well, he's a striker. Um, that they'd be missing, really, because you think back, Zlatan Ibrahimovic was probably the last out-and-out -out striker that they had yeah. before Cavani that was, you know, world-class. world, you know, world class. I mean, mm -hmm. Cavani is, is a class striker, don't get me wrong, but Ronaldo's just in a slightly different uh, different league. And, you know, you said the, the stats there. Um, yeah, he scored 29 goals last season for Juventus uh, in a struggling team. Those goals came in 31 um, starts and two sub-appearances. So 29 goals in 33 total appearances, which is just ridiculous. Um, and his expected goals total was 28.3. So pretty much bang in line with wow. his, his actual total. And to be fair, Ronaldo's, um, you know, we can judge players on being clinical or not clinical, but Ronaldo's always in and around his expected total. And that, the fact that he's expected total so high shows how often he gets in good scoring positions, um, which is you know quite sensational. He averaged 0 0.9 expected goals per 95 minutes last season. So wow. basically, as soon as he enters the pitch, he's going to get 0 0.9 expected goals, which is equivalent of around three big chances. Um, you know, if he scores two of them, you're winning the game. Um, you know, even look even back to the previous season, 1920, where he scored just the 31 goals for Juventus in the league. Um, same again, 27.3 expected goals, very similar in terms of production. Um, and, you know, 
the guy's just a I like using the word freak. He is a freak. Yeah. That's what he is. He's a freak. And Manchester United have signed a player that is a, 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 a huge difference maker. Yeah. He's going to be on the pitch. Will he drive them to a title? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think that he will provide them with enough all round game. Um, he'll definitely score a lot of goals. So the golden boot price interests me a little bit, yeah. mainly because of the penalty aspect, because he will not let Bruno Fernandes be taking those penalties. Yeah, well, that's um, the thing. Yeah, yeah. and thing. Bruno Fernandes scored double-figure penalties last season. So if you add, if you give Ronaldo a double-figure penalty head start, uh, he only needs to get over 10, Correct. 11 goals to, to potentially place Bruno Fernandes place last season with 18 goals. Um, so yeah, that's that's a potential angle I like the look of. But just looking at his some of his stats, so um, his goals to Juventus over the last two seasons. So last season, his goals were worth 18 points to Juventus. So basically, he, he, he was scoring crucial goals that were winning the matches. And the season before that, it was 24 points he was worth to Juventus. So if Ronaldo's goals were taken away, 24, they would have lost 24 points in the title winning season. I mean, um, that is, I mean, those stats are absolutely astonishing. It's mad. Like, I mean, unbelievable, isn't that's it? That's nearly a quarter of their points total. In, in fact, it's more than a quarter. Um, and then just for context, Bruno Fernandes, obviously, was the most influential player at United last mm. season. His goals were only worth 13 points to Man United. So right. even in a, in a team that was struggling, Ronaldo was, was still way more crucial than uh, Fernandes, whose team obviously was... Um, you know, doing slightly better. Uh, you know, what you've also got to look at, Jake, is the fact that he's got good players around him at Manchester United. You know, this is a team that finished second in the Premier League last season, albeit a distant second in the end to, to Manchester City. But they've got, you know, Pogba, Sancho, Greenwood, um, you know, Rashford, Martial, and 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 Bruno Fernandes as well, feeding him... Portugal teammates, no less. You'd, you'd suspect that actually he will have no problem um, wrestling those set pieces off Fernandez. You might see a sharing type scenario. We're not sure if Ronaldo is going to be playing 90 minutes every single week, particularly to begin with. The bloke plays 90 minutes. He, I mean, he I does, having, doesn't he? That's I was the having thing. this conversation. Like, we did, well, one of the guys at work, a colleague, has just been talking to us about his Champions League outrights. And I said, well, Ronaldo for top scorer in the Champions League. He's like, no, nah, he might get rotated. I was like, Ronaldo does not get rotated. <laughs> he hates it. He trains every week, every single day, longest hours in the gym, longest hours at the training ground. He doesn't train all that time to sit on the bench and be rotated. Mm. Um, and, you know, when, when you're at that age anyway, you don't really need rotating. You, what you should probably be doing is taking... A lot, not a backseat at training, but just reducing what he's doing a little bit and just trying to keep himself at the top of his game. But he'll not do that. He's a relentless machine. Um, and it's exciting to have him back because, you know, not only are you getting the on-field stuff that we've discussed, the you know, the goals, but you're also getting the off-the-field benefit of having just a born winner with such an incredible attitude in and around the likes of Greenwood, Rashford, Sancho. Um, and, you know, we saw... An uplift in Rashford when Ibrahimovic was there. Rashford's game did increase quite a lot because he's learning a lot from, you know, a wise old head, a player who's been there, done it. It's going to be even more so when you've got Ronaldo there. He's like, he was a club icon, a club legend, a player that Rashford and, you know, Greenwood probably grew up watching and idolising. The amount of things that they'll be able to learn from him. And, and he, you know, I'm thinking far ahead here. And again, we're not Man United fans, but it's a signing that could almost grab more players to come back to, to come to Manchester United. I mean, we're talking about Kylian Mbappe, who's out of contract next summer. Ronaldo's his idol as well. Yeah. Why aren't Man Manchester United, if they make a contract offer, Ronaldo could be a big persuader in him and potentially going United rather than Madrid. Same could be said for Haaland as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so those he he is that kind of, he's got that kind of gravity. He's such a big personality, a big player, such a winner. Yeah. that having him in and around the dressing room will be just immense for, for the United squad. And, you know, Graham Souness's favourite player, Paul Pogba, he might get a kick <laughs> up the bum from having Ronaldo there because he's no longer the biggest ego. He isn't. He's, <laughs> his ego is dwarfed by Ronaldo. Ronaldo yeah. is is the big the big man. He's been there, he's done it, he's won everything there is to win. Um, but they say that, you know, you say the ego thing, and this is kind of what, look, we're straying away slightly here, but it, you, got, you do look at that and everybody says that he is so intent on improving everyone. And yes, he loves the hat. You know, you, we saw him saw that goal for Portugal, didn't we, last week to break the international scoring record, another ridiculous record that he's broken. 
But, you know, he's taking the shirt off and he's running over and it's all about him. Of course it was, you know, he wanted that moment and quite, you know, rightly so. However, every person, all these former teammates that have come out, you know, from Quinton Fortune to Rio Ferdinand, you know, everybody has said the same in the last few weeks since this thing has become apparent that Ronaldo is going to be playing back in the Premier League. They've all said that they he wants to improve and he doesn't actually care if the, unless the team is winning. As long as the team's won, if he hasn't scored, he's not actually that bothered. It, it's all about that. But he gives off this air of, of course, it's all about me. And if he does score, he's going to milk it and let everybody know about it and really bask in it. And you can't really, you can't really not that. It's yeah. going to I mean, be brilliant. you mentioned the game in, in the internationals. You, you're talking about the, the winning goal, but the goal that actually overtook the record was the mm. equalising goal and he went yeah, straight yeah. to grab the ball and straight to the centre spot because that was only an equaliser. Well, yeah, that shows you the go. mentality of the bloke. You know, he's, he's frightening really and I think it's... If you, if you create chances for him, he'll score them uh, and that's, you know, his run, he's intelligent with his running. You know, he does, he's not a high-pressing player in his later age, obviously. He's not, he doesn't do all that intense mm. press, pressing. He's, he's sensational in the air. Uh, his hold-up plays good. Um, yeah, it, it's it's going to be really exciting to see what happens. And and for me, he he's going to be the number nine. He's going to play down the middle. He's going to have Rashford, Sancho, Greenwood either side. He's going to have Fernandez in behind. Pogba maybe is a tad bit deeper, feeding him. Um, you know, you've, you've now got Varane as well alongside Maguire. That could potentially mean that rather than playing two older midfielders, United could play a three and push higher up the pitch and all of a sudden make them more attacking. So. Yeah, it's, it's exciting, but um, I don't know. I, I still feel like they're a holding midfielder away, Man United, for being a, a, a real contender. Um, I, I mean, if, I'm, I was surprised they didn't go and try and get Saul, to be honest. Mm. I think he would have been a, a decent fit to just sit there at the base of a pivot. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's exciting to have him back in the Premier League. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I've not looked at the prices, but I'd imagine he's maybe around the even money mark to score against Newcastle. <laughs> at the weekend, maybe even shorter. Um, yeah, you know, every every week in Serie A or the Liga previously, he, he was odds on to score because he's just that kind of player. We've got loads of odds as well on Pinnacle um, on Ronaldo as well. Total Premier League goals over twenty point five is at one point six two zero. Under twenty point five is 2.20. So actually you do look at those stats that you're on about in terms of his expected goals and whatnot. I mean, just absolutely astonishing. Um, and if you have listened to Jake reel off some of those stats, just, just say them to your mates. And if, if they're sort of saying, oh, he's 36, he's not going to do it. Nah, he is. He definitely is.